and leasing. We all know that leasing has become a timely and flexible source of term financing for industries, especially when not everyone could have access to all types of projects and classes of assets. In this lesson, we will learn the meaning and concept of leasing, the types of leasing and higher purchase, the documentation of lease agreement and the accounting aspects in leasing. After going through this presentation, you should be able to explain leasing, identify the types of leasing, describe higher purchase and leasing, differentiate between advantages and disadvantages of leasing, understand lease evaluation. Leasing is defined as a written contract entered into between a leasing company called the lesser on one part and the user of the equipment called the lessee on the other part whereby the lessee agrees to pay the lesser a specified sum of rentals over an obligatory period of time in consideration for the use of capital equipment owned by the lesser without the lessee having to purchase or own the equipment. Leasing a product is similar to renting it. A contract lasts over a number of years, usually between 2 and 10, depending on the cost and usable life of the product and have the full use of a piece of equipment without having to pay the full cost of the item in one go. A lease is a contract between the owner of an asset, the lesser, and the party desiring to use that asset, the lessee. Generally, leases provide for the following terms. The lesser allows the lessee the unrestricted right to use the asset. During the lease term, the lessee agrees to make periodic payments to the lesser and to maintain the asset and title to the asset remains with the lesser, who usually retakes possession of the asset at the conclusion of the lease. The assignable guarantees and service terms are passed on to the lessee. The lessee insures the equipment and endorses the insurance policy in favor of the lesser. Acquisition of new plants and equipments are often required by business organizations. While it is necessary to see the profitability in investing on new equipment, one must equally be aware of the necessity to conserve cash resources to maintain liquidity. Under such circumstances, leasing arrangements may come in handy for various reasons. Leasing provides 100% financing of the cost of capital goods. Since the lesser owns the leased assets, there is no necessity for security. Leasing is a unique type of commercial contract. Lease financing is often termed as equipment leasing. In operating lease, the lease is usually for a shorter term and is generally cancelable. As the asset is leasable repeatedly to several persons, the operating lease is usually said to be a non-payout lease. Service lease is equipment leasing under which the lesser provides financing as well as servicing of the assets during the lease period. The lesser will covenant with the lessee to provide maintenance and servicing of the leased asset during the existence of the lease. Financial lease is a long-term lease, usually coinciding with the economic life of the asset and is non-cancellable. A full payout lease is defined as one from which the lesser can reasonably expect to realize a return of its full investment in the leased property plus estimated cost of financing the property over the term of the lease from the estimated tax benefits. Sale and lease back. Under this type of transaction, the owner of an asset sells it to a leasing company while it still has useful life gets the payment for the asset and gets the asset back for lease. The sale and lease back arrangement can be an operating lease or financial lease depending upon the intentions of the parties in the agreement. Sales aid lease. If a leasing firm enters into a tie-up with a manufacturer for marketing the latter's products through his own leasing operation, it is a sale aid lease. Big ticket lease. Lease of the assets of bigger value running into several crores is called a big ticket lease. Leveraged leases. These are often referred to as big ticket leases as the value of the leased asset is very high, 
making it difficult for the lesser to finance the purchase by himself. A cross-border lease is one in which a lesser in one country leases out his asset to a lessee in another country. Cross-border lease may be structured as double dip or triple dip. The biggest hindrance to cross-border leasing is foreign exchange regulations. The lease agreement is treated as an ordinary agreement under the Indian Stamp Act and registration of an equipment lease agreement is optional. No prescribed format is available at present and clauses are incorporated according to the need of the parties. Inter alia, the agreement will mention about the period, lease rentals, exemptions, repairs and alternations, default, insurance, delivery and, and surrender of the equipment and arbitration beside the rights and liabilities of the lessee and less. No specific or particular law deals with leases. The lease contract is mainly subject to the provisions of the Indian Contract Act, but numerous legislations and regulations are also applicable at one point or another. Consumer installment credit is a method of financing the consumers for acquisition of consumer durables. In personal loan, either secured or unsecured is granted by a financier directly to the consumer. Higher purchase or conditional sale. Under a higher purchase agreement, the consumer has the option to buy the finance goods by paying a token consideration. Under a conditional sale agreement, property automatically passes to the consumer after the last installment is paid. In credit sale, the title passes on to the customer from the beginning. The agreement may be either directly between customer and financier or between customers and dealer. In rental, sometimes the financier enters into rental or leasing agreement directly with the customer. Higher purchase is a purchase of an asset in which customer makes down payment and finance rest of the amount through financial institutions or bank. On rest of the unpaid amount, he pays interest at a certain pre-described rate of interest. After making complete payment, the assets become the legal right of the customer. Lease, on the other hand, is an agreement of using asset for certain period and paying rent on it at a pre-described rate of interest. It is a temporary acquiring of an asset just to use it. Generally, private schools are building on lease land. Interest on lease is fully exempt from tax. Difference between higher purchase and lease is given in tabular form. Please go through it. Advantages of leasing are If an asset is needed for a short period, Leasing makes sense. Buying an asset and arranging to resell after use is time-consuming, inconvenient and costly. A leasing plan can always be tailor-made to suit the requirements and cash flows of the lessee and the financing structure of the lesser. Leasing companies are more accommodating than banks and financial institutions. Hence, acquisition of asset through lease contract is faster and cheaper than any other mode of asset financing. Financial institutions while lending stipulate restrictions on the borrower as regards management, debt equity norm, payment of dividend, repayments, etc. Such restrictive covenants are absent in leasing. The leased asset and leasing obligation do not figure in the balance sheet of the lessee. Acquiring assets through leasing does not alter his debt or equity ratio. Thus, leasing helps the lessee to borrow more. Leasing permits 100% finance. Compared to borrowing and buying, there may not be a margin contribution for the acquisition of the asset. To that extent, leasing permits alternative productive use of margin money funds. The disadvantages are Leasing is only another method, disguised one, of debt financing. Though it is an off-balance sheet item, its implication is known to a financial analyst or creditor. After the 46th constitutional amendment, many states levy sales tax on leasing. Leasing does not provide the lessee the pride of ownership. 
In many cases, leasing may be costlier than straightaway borrowing because the lesser is only a financial intermediary. Leased assets are not entitled to capital subsidy eligible for projects in backward areas. A leasing transaction has to be beneficial to both the lessee and lesser. Each party evaluates the transaction from his point of view and arrives at the cost-benefit analysis. There are many models to evaluate a lease from lessee's angle. Some treat leasing as a finance decision and compare the advantages of buying and leasing according to discounted cash flow technique using either net present value NPV or internal rate of return IRR method. Under NPV method, the present value of cash flows associated with the buying and leasing alternatives are independently ascertained and compared. The alternative that shows higher NPV is preferred, but the basic question is to decide the rate at which the cash flows will be discounted to arrive at the net present value. In the IRR analysis, the lessee's evaluation is based on cash flows associated with various options. Lesser's perspective. While evaluating a lease, a lesser faces a problem of whether to accept a lease plan or not, or which plan among the various alternatives to accept, or how to quote lease rates. The lesser's inflows from a financial lease are initial or security deposit, tax benefit on account of depreciation, etc. The following outflows are most perceptible in a lease deal. Purchase cost of the asset, financing cost, a lease deal entails initial outflow in the year zero on the acquisition of the asset. Lease requires no down payment and finances only the value of the equipment expected to be depleted during the lease term. The lessee usually has an option to buy the equipment for its remaining value at the end of the lease. The leased equipment itself is usually all that is needed to secure a lease transaction. A lease requires only a lease payment at the beginning of the first payment period, which is usually much lower than the down payment. The end user transfers all risk of obsolescence to the lessors as there is no obligation to own equipment at the end of the lease. When leases are structured as true leases, the end user may claim the entire lease payment as a tax deduction. The equipment write-off is tied to the lease term, which can be shorter than IRS depreciation schedules resulting in larger tax deductions each year. The deduction is also the same every year, which simplifies budgeting. Equipment financed with a conditional sale lease is treated the same as owned equipment. Leased assets are expensed when the lease is an operating lease. Such assets do not appear on the balance sheet, which can improve financial ratios. A loan requires the end user to invest a down payment in the equipment. The loan finances the remaining amount. A loan usually requires the borrower to pledge other assets for collateral. A loan usually requires two expenditures during the first payment period, a down payment at the beginning and a loan payment at the end. The end user bears all the risk of equipment devaluation because of new technology. Now let's see how much you have learned till now. State whether the following statements are true or false. The leasing company recovers the full cost of the equipment plus charges over the period of the lease. True. Lessors do not use operating lease accounting treatment when they are likely to keep the asset when the lease is over. False. As the asset is leasable repeatedly to several persons, the operating lease is usually said to be a non-payout lease. True. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied so far. Leasing is an attractive form of financing because of its flexibility, 
which is why approximately one third of all equipment acquisitions are now financed by leases. Lease is defined by the international accounting standard as an agreement whereby the lesser conveys to the lessee in return for rent the right to use an agreed period of time. A full payout lease is defined as one from which the lesser can reasonably expect to realize a return of its full investment in the leased property plus estimated cost of financing the property over the term of the lease. In operating lease, the lease is usually for a shorter term and is generally cancellable. An operating lease is a lease in which the lesser retains all the benefits and risk of ownership of the asset. Service lease is equipment leasing under which the lesser provides financing as well as servicing of the assets during the lease period. Under NPV method, the present value of cash flows associated with the buying and leasing alternatives are independently ascertained and compared. Leveraged leases are often referred to as big ticket leases as the value of the leased asset is very high, making it difficult for the lesser to finance the purchase by himself. Under sale and leaseback type of transaction, the owner of an asset sells it to a leasing company while it still has useful life, gets the payment for the asset and gets the asset back for lease.